today's video, we're gonna be doing an oil change on the R36 Passat, which is right behind me. This is the VR6 engine and it's all wheel drive. And we're gonna be doing an oil change for the motor and a massive, massive thank you to Super Cheap Auto for sponsoring today's video and providing me with all the products you see in front of me right now, which is gonna to make today's video super, super easy. So we have our Tool Pro low profile three ton jack stand here, which is gonna get under the R36 and jack it up nice and easy, as well as some jack stands. We're just gonna go through quickly what they've provided me, which is also what you'll need for today's video. So you'll need a jack and two jack stands. Uh, I'd suggest a jack because you probably aren't gonna get a ramp under the R36 because it's low as at the front and you'll probably just hit the ramps um, mine is also lower, which is also make this a lot more difficult for me. As well as that, we have some Castrol Edge 5W30 oil. This also meets the Volkswagen standard, the 504 slash 507 standard. So it is what is recommended by the manufacturer to put back in this car. As well as that, we have a Ryko oil filter. This is designed to meet factory specifications. So there's our new replacement oil filter. We also have a 36 mil socket, which is what will remove the oil filter housing. As well as that, we have a replacement sump plug by Smart O, which has like an O-ring. It's specific design apparently is supposed to prevent leaks. It also has some Torx keys here. Uh, this is gonna to be to remove the under tray of the R36. We also have an oil drain pan, which is what collects the oil and is able to be, uh, allows us to put the oil back into a container like this to utilize super cheap autos uh, oil recycling center. So basically, once you're done with your oil, the dirty oil, you take it to super cheap auto, put it in a bin, and once you've done that, they'll recycle the oil and dispose of it correctly so it can be reused later down the road. So that is awesome to have, as well as that on this side as well. I've also got a mat to lie on whilst I'm under the car. I also have a um, impact socket set. It doesn't need to be an impact socket set, but just any sort of socket set. I have a Tool Pro impact socket set over here, as well as a torque wrench, because you wanna make sure we're doing torque specs on the oil filter housing and the sump plug when we put it back in, so we don't cross, uh, not cross thread, so we don't strip any of the plugs, or anything like that. And I've also got this here, which is an action camera, which is what I'm gonna be using whilst I'm under the car to hopefully be able to catch all the angles to show you everything you possibly need with the R36 oil change. So. First step, we're gonna jack the car up and hopefully we can find some supports underneath the car because I haven't actually jacked the front of the car up yet on this car ever. And hopefully we can find some really solid places to put our jack stand. So that's what we're gonna go do now. Here we have all of our products from Super Cheap Auto. Massive thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Let's get on with changing the oil and showing you how it's all done on the R36 Passat. So as I just mentioned, the first step to the oil change is to jack the car up. So we're gonna slide our jack under. We're gonna look under the car and look for our jack point. Now I highly suggest you search up where these are on your car as it depends on every single car, it is different. You wanna make sure you're jacking it up from the correct point so you don't damage the car or the jack or anything along those lines. So as you can see right now, and just quickly before we jack it up any further, actually let's quickly stop ourselves and grab two bits of wood here just to chalk the back wheels. So just a bit of wood like this or proper chocks will work just fine. That's gonna stop, even though our handbrake is on, this is also gonna be able to stop the rear wheels from sliding if for whatever reason that was to fail and that'll stop the car from sliding off. So we'll jack the front of the car up. We'll continue going. We'll probably go pretty much as high as the jack allows us to go. That way we can get the most access under to hopefully find a really, really good spot for our jack stands. That bit of wood at the back has just got a lot of pressure on it just then, as you just heard. So keep jacking the car up from the jacking point. And once we get it up in the air, I'm gonna grab a quick torch and have a look to see where we can put our jack stands under the car. So, now nah, we'll keep going actually. We'll get, we'll get it as high as we can. This jack goes very, very high. So very easy for this sort of project like this. Let's have a look. We've got ample room under the car right now. So let's have a look. Okay, so now that we have our jack stand under there, we're gonna lower it down very, very slowly. So just twist very slow. We can see there. that our car is now supported by a jack stand. So as much as right now we could physically get under the car and change the oil, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other side as well. 
And I'm also gonna leave the jack underneath the car as well, just as added security. That way there is no way known that anything could go wrong here because working under a car like this is extremely dangerous. Lots of things can go wrong and you could get caused or get stuck under there. And on a car this low, you are probably not going to end up in a very good way. So as we can see, we have the R36 up very high. We're gonna put our second jack stand under in the same position as the first one. Slowly lower the car down. And the moment you hear that noise, put a little bit of pressure on the jack. And now we know our car is successfully supported on our jack stands here. So the car cannot go anywhere. Give it a little rub. Well, not a rub, sorry, that sounds so stupid. Give it a little rock. You can see it's super, super solid in position. We have two jack stands holding the car in perfectly in place as well as the jack. So we have three things holding the car up right now. It's super, super stable. It's not going anywhere. Now the car is safe for us to go underneath it. We don't have to worry about anything going catastrophically wrong whilst we're under it. We've now got the engine popped. We've got plenty of access underneath. I took this car out for a drive this morning and now most people when they do oil changes will recommend you get the oil temperature up a little bit. I have taken this car for a drive this morning. So the oil temp is up. I can feel radiant heat coming from the car. This jumper is about five minutes away from coming off. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna go in the car, check on the dash what the oil temperature is because we wanna make sure whilst we want it a little bit warm, we wanna make sure it's not going to burn us whilst we're under there because <laughs> I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I think the figure most people go for is 60 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna probably opt for about 55 because I know my hands don't like hot um, stuff at all, hot water or anything like that. So we're gonna go suss out what the temperature is on the dash and uh, we'll work on that accordingly. I might have to let this car sit here for a little while because it was about 75 when I checked about 20 minutes ago. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop our key in twice. You can see the steering column lock just come undone. We're gonna press okay, okay, go up, and we'll wait for our oil temperature to pop up on the screen whilst it just quickly checks it. And we're at 54, so we're at optimal temperature right now. We can get under that car and change that oil. That is perfect news for us. So now you can see where the front jack stand mounts are. They are on what I believe to be the front control arm mounts that go to the frame. Yes, they are the, sorry, the lower control arms are where they actually mount to the frame of the car. So we're in a perfect position right here. The jack stands are supported brilliantly. You can see the underside of the engine bay here, which is actually the first time I've ever seen it on this car. So what we're gonna do, first step first with these cars, is to grab a Torx. I believe this is going to be a T15 key that is going to remove the under tray. So we'll get on our back here and we'll slide under the R36. Let's see. So this is not a T15. It's probably T20. So a T20 should be able to remove the under tray pan which it is, these are done up very tight. These would have been very good with a wrench. Now we don't wanna lose these bolts because we need to install this under tray again once we are done with the oil change. So you can actually get access to the sump without taking this under tray off. But what you won't get access to without taking the under tray off is the oil filter housing, which is where that 36 mil socket is utilized. So what we'll do whilst I'm under here as well, I might as well give the underside of the engine bay a little bit of a cleanup. Whilst it does look pretty nice, it could definitely do with a little bit of maintenance. It has been on quite a few gravel roads recently, so whilst we're under here, can't hurt. A little bit of braking parts clean, some rags. We'll go over it, we'll get the underside of this engine bay looking clean for a car that's only done 50, just hit 54,000 kilometers. So 30, I'm gonna say 35,000 miles. I want to make sure this thing be looking nice. So I'll remove the rest of these and then we'll get back to it. And now once we have all seven of the under tray screws, you can slide that thing back and out comes the under tray of the R36. And that gives us access there to our oil filter and our sump is at the back of the block here, which is still relatively hot to the touch. I guess it is probably around that 55 degrees Celsius as per what the engine or what the dash said. Okay, so we now have the action camera running as well, which you should be able to see me on. If you come up to the back here of the engine bay, 
here is our drain plug here for our oil. So that was done up rather tight. We'll bring our oil drain pan back over. And then once that has been loosened off, this is going to be finger tight just to remove. Now, apply some pressure as you remove this because we'll have oil dripping straight away. And if we take it off loosely, the instant it gets far enough out, we'll end up draining all of our oil all over our hands. So it's a bit of an art form to doing this. Do it nice and slowly, nice and slowly. Till we reach the end, you'll feel the thread start to remove pretty slow. And once we get to that point, it's going to be applying pressure to it and then quickly pulling the plug out. We're gonna grab our washer here too, before it's too late, pull out washer towards the end. And I know this is a 27 mil long thread. So here we go. Feel it's at its end point, grab that washer and quickly remove it. And I spilled a ton of it. <laughs> That's all right though, look how black that oil is though. So that goes to show you that we are due for an oil change. So we're gonna fill the sump up very slowly with the uh, oil, put our sump plug to the side there, and I'm gonna go grab a quick rag whilst this continues to drain the oil. And we'll dump this underneath so once it eventually starts to run out, it'll begin dropping. As you can see, plenty of oil on my hand. So let's grab some rags because we spilt some oil on the garage floor surface as well, which we want to get up as quickly as possible because it is rather black. Well, actually it's not really. Once you spread it out and dilute it a little bit, it goes rather gray, um, brown, but there we go. With the beginning of the oil change, draining the oil. We're gonna remove the oil cap up the top in the engine as well. That way we can make sure that there's no air stopping that from being able to drain. And as we can see, out comes all of the oil out of the R36. So we'll get back under, we'll check how my camera is going. We're 23 minutes into this process so far. As you can see, the oil is splurting out. So basically for now, you can probably hear it through the microphone. It is still running oil out of the sump. All we can do for now is just leave it for maybe four to five minutes until that completely finishes draining. And then once that's done, we'll move our way up to the oil filter and slowly remove that, drain the oil, hopefully don't make so much of a mess this time around. And uh, once we've done that, we'll install our new oil filter, we'll put our sump plug in with a new washer and we'll be pretty much good to go to fill the engine bay back up with oil. And uh, we'll be ready to get this thing back out on the road for another 7,000, 8,000 kilometers. And so whilst we finish waiting for the last remaining drops to come out of the sump, here is our oil filter here. You can see that 36 mil socket that will fit perfectly up there like so. And what we can see is we have this line here which just has some cabling in it. What we're gonna do is just pry on this clip here, unplug it, pull it out, and then just tuck it out of the way. Might even get a zip tie here just to tie it up to what looks to be this coolant line here, just to get it right out of the way of the oil filter here so when we remove it we have very clean access to just dumping it straight into that drain pan. So as I said we're just going to get a cable tie here or a zip tie whatever you want to call it and we'll just pull this up nice and tight out of the way that way we're not going to be interfering with that and getting oil all over that line just make sure we obviously once we are done with the oil change take that cable tie off and put it back in this clip just here so well by the looks of things our oil change is done. Well, our oil removal out of the sump is done. It stopped dripping oil. So what we're gonna do is get our drain pan here and we're gonna slowly, because the oil is still pretty viscous because of the fact that it's warm. And then we have our oil filter here. So what we're going to do is of course, remove this anti-clockwise. There we go. Nice and easy. Now I'm using just a torque wrench here because it has a fairly long arm on it. Once I feel this friction loosen up a little bit, I'll start doing this by hand, which is just about now. So we'll remove our torque wrench from it here and we'll remove the rest of it by hand. So this of course is going to drip a ton of oil. I'm gonna roll my sleeves up. Now I haven't actually drained this because the drain plugs on these are apparently in need of replacement the moment you remove it. So this is going to be, probably make a pretty big mess here, but we're gonna do it very slowly. 
very carefully, getting oil all over the place here. But, there we go. So, once we've done that, we have our new oil filter here as well as the old oil filter in the old oil filter housing. So there's two things we have to do now. I've obviously got gloves on as I probably should have right from the get go. Number one, let's grab our new oil filter out and make sure it is the same size and match it looks to be. So there's our new oil filter. What we're gonna do is remove the old one just by prying on the end here, out it comes. And then on here is an O-ring. Now that O-ring is going to be rather difficult to get off with the hands, especially with the gloves. So I'm just gonna grab a very small flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna be able to pry this in here behind this O-ring, get our screwdriver under it. And as you can see, off comes that ring. So that ring needs to be replaced every single time you service one of these cars, as well as obviously the oil filter itself. So what we can do now is just wipe our hands down again on this rag. If we go under, back into the packaging here with our new oil filter, here's the new O-ring. So, we'll open that package up. Here is the brand new O-ring, and we'll just stretch this over. This might be a little bit difficult, but it will fit on there. And you just wanna pry it down back into the channel where it sits, and there we have a new O-ring. So, the other thing you wanna do whilst you've done this is obviously put our new oil filter in the housing. That'll just clip into place like it has just there. That's now done. We now have a new oil filter in the housing and a new O-ring on here. We wanna make sure we go around, make sure this O-ring is seated the whole way. Make sure the oil filter's in there nice and solid. And then what we're gonna do is just go over to one of our new oil bottles, which we have just here in the background. You just can't see it. You wanna take the lid off this oil bottle here really quick, dip our finger in the oil so we get some nice, clean oil on our finger and we're just going to lubricate the o-rings here this is going to help to ensure that they seal up nicely let's grab another little bit of oil it's going to make sure they seal all nicely in position so there we have it our o-rings our oil filter has been replaced our o-rings have been oiled up now our oil filter is ready to go back in the r36 with the new filter so it's going to wipe down the rest of the housing here with the rag. Make sure it's all nice and clean here. And we will be ready to go and put this in. Now, the oil filter torque spec is 25 newton meters of torque. So get your torque wrench. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set this one right now to 25 newton meters of torque. Okay, so we now have our torque wrench set with our socket on it. Let's go back under the car and fasten the torque. Sorry, and fasten the new oil filter back into position. We're gonna put our old oil filter in the old or in the new oil filter box, as well as all of the rubbish for that. And we'll just throw this one in the bin. So under the car we get with our newly replaced oil filter. Now we wanna make sure this lines up and clicks into place properly up in there. And we'll just hand tighten this up as tight as we can by hand. Let's grab this rag too we can make sure we have something to clean our hands on as we go nicely up making sure nothing is binding there we go nice and tight now grab our torque wrench and we'll bang it up into position and then once this thing clicks we'll have reached perfect torque spec And there we have it. As you can hear, a few clicks out of the torque wrench. And now we have that set at 25 newton meters of torque. What we're gonna do now is remember that cable tie that we added up here. We're gonna undo that cable tie, release that line, feed it back into its position, tighten it up, and there we have it. It's got a little bit of oil on that off my finger just then, so we'll wipe that off. But yes, there we have our oil filter replaced torque to spec. Now the only other thing we have left to do is clean our sump plug and put a new washer on the sump plug, reinstall that, type, torque that up to 30 newton meters of torque and then we're ready to put oil in the engine. So here we have our new sump plug here. This is the Smart O sump plug 
with its washer here, it's brand new and it's O-ring here. It's supposed to stop oil links, leaks. So we're gonna put this into the sump, tight, tighten this up to 30 newton meters of torque and then we're ready for our new oil. So again, likewise with our oil filter, we're just gonna get a little bit of oil on our finger and then just run it around the washer here just to make sure it's supposed to help it seal up. And we'll rub it around the O-ring that is up here as well. And uh, yeah, get that ready, pop that in place. Wipe my finger back down again, grab that, take that socket off, pop him to the side. We'll grab our 19 mil socket, which is just here on the bench. And we'll set our torque wrench to 30 newton meters of torque, which is... So, get under the car, up to the sump. And we'll pop that in. I want to be very careful we don't cross thread anything here. We'll make sure this goes in nice and easily by itself. Grab a spare rag here. Wipe up any excess oil that is coming out. Keep going by hand. It's actually beginning to get a little bit difficult, so we're just going to go straight to our wrench. progress here. Move the camera over. So we're making progress here. And there we have it. There is our 30 newton meter torque rating. So feel that one more time. Clicked it in place. And there we have it. We have our new sump plug in, which is the Smart O sump plug from Super Cheap Auto. We have our new oil filter in. We're just gonna clean up the underside of our engine, just up here. Now we are ready to put oil back in the engine. Now we could put the cover on right now. However, I'm actually gonna fill it with oil before I put the engine cover back on. That way we can make sure that there is no oil leaks anywhere to be seen. So just gonna quickly go around the oil filter one more time, get all that excess oil off is left over and yeah now the r36 calls for 5.5 liters of oil so being that one of these oil containers is five liters on the dot i'm going to put that in um, by itself then check the sump plug see how oh sorry then check the dipstick and see how much oil it says it has in it so off come the gloves let's move the camera around and let's have a look Alrighty, so our new sump plug's in, our new oil filter's in, it's all torque to spec, it's not leaking. It's now time to put our new Castrol Edge 5W30 Volkswagen Standard Oil in. Now I've put a little towel around here, I don't want to spill any oil and I seem to be on the clumsy side today. We also have our funnel lodged in here which is ready for us to pour our new oil in and that will go straight into the sump. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by putting, yeah, four and a half, five liters in, check the dipstick, see how we're looking. I know the capacity of this is five and a half liters, so we're gonna be working up towards that number, but we're gonna take it slowly. I'd rather underfill it and have to refill it a couple of times, or just add some a couple of times than overfill it and have to drain some because that would be a massive pain. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our oil, I'm gonna begin pouring it in. I'm gonna move the camera because I wanna pour it from this side. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Moment of truth. Start pouring some of this brand new oil in. So just quickly, we've now put probably a liter and a half of oil in. I'm just gonna check the underside of the car, make sure nothing is dripping. And from what I can see, everything looks good. And there we have it. There's our first container of Castrol 5W30 in the engine. So again, we're gonna pull our dipstick out. We'll suss out what our levels are at. Keeping in mind, this is cold. 
now or cold oil in the motor. Let's see. On the dipstick, we are now reading at just in the low range. So we will now get our second bottle, do the same thing, open the lid on that, but we're only gonna be able to put about 500 mil of this in, otherwise we're gonna overflow it really, really quickly. Pop in a little bit more, that should do us. Again, we're taking this slowly so we can make sure we're just doing it right. Again, oil comes off the dipstick, pop the dipstick back in, bring it up slowly, check it out. We are perfectly at the high level for our dipstick. We are absolutely laughing there. So there we have it. We have oil in the engine now. We're going to take this towel out of the way. We're going to grab our funnel. We're going to put that in the towel. Put the towel on the ground. Grab our oil cap. We'll reinstall the oil cap like so. We got oil in the engine. We're gonna go under. Again, we're not leaking at all, which is brilliant news. So what we'll do is we'll reinstall the under tray and we'll lower the car down. We'll start her up, let it run for maybe five or so minutes, recheck the oil level. And uh, that is a successful oil change for an R36 Passat. And now for the final step here that I've been waiting to do since I started. It's time we reinstall the under tray under this car which consists of seven T20 screws. So we'll get under here, pop her out the way, bring it forward. And we'll have to find where this thing mounts, which is just there. And into position she goes, grab our screws. Now I'm gonna put the back two in to take the weight off. Finished up, look at that, under tray's on. Going to jack the car up with the jack, slightly like so. And we're gonna get under to our jack stand, press the ratchet, drops it down. Bring out the jack stand. So, just thinking about it, under tray's done, sump plug's torqued, oil filter's torqued, down she goes. We're gonna do this nice and slowly because we expect that this is going to pull the car in because of the jack stand on the other side. So we bring our jack across to this side of the car and down comes the car. And there we have it. The oil is changed. Now just quickly, one more time. It's funny now seeing it back this low to the ground. We're going to quickly, one more time, before we start the engine up and move the car out of the garage to let it idle for a bit. I'm gonna do one more check of the um, the dipstick here. Just to quickly double check now that we're level, we have the perfect amount of oil in. So dipstick back in and out. If you look at that, it's looking good. If anything, it's probably slightly too high, but at the end of the day, it'll probably just burn it anyway. Just maybe a couple of mil above the fill or full line. So, moment of truth. Let's take out our chocks. Car's all done. Let's get the first start on the new oil. Now I'm praying that everything is all good here. 
and we don't have any issues with this. It might sound a little funny because the oil filter will need to fill up with oil, but everything all good. Grab the car keys, bang the garage door up just a foot. And here we go. Moment of truth. And there we have it. The oil in the R36 has successfully been changed. All right, so as I mentioned at the start of this video, Super Cheap Auto have a recycling for their oil. So basically, here's our oil drain pan with our dirty oil in it. This is the empty Castrol Edge one that I use the entire bottle of and that is in my R36 now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip our dirty oil into this tub right here and we're gonna fill this up because we can take this back to Super Cheap Auto and they'll look after it and recycle it correctly for us. So keeping in mind the fact that the volume of this should technically be a significant amount more than what this container can take, we'll fill this up nice and slowly. So there we have it, it goes to show that we Definitely had low oil considering the fact that we, with what we pulled out, we were able to fill a bottle which we have one and a bit of back in the car. So we're definitely running on the low side of oil in the R36. The dipstick was reading about half of oil um, capacity. So, well, the half of the recommended. So it was right in the clear zone, but it goes to show you that you can fit what is supposed to be five and a half liters of oil back into that tub. So. That is dirty oil now that is in here. I'm just gonna shake this a couple times. And what we'll do now that that's full, put our lid back on top and we are able to take this bottle now to Super Cheap Auto, deliver this off and they will recycle this oil for us and it will be repurposed. So there's a container of dirty oil. We'll go clean all this stuff up, throw out all these rags and that is a successful oil change.